hello and welcome. We are already quite far into our spa uh, geospatial weeks. My co-worker Martin Karana and me, Arne Wolf, are going to start things off in May with our webinar, Structured versus Unstructured Point Clouds and how to handle them. Now, Martin, do you want to uh, talk us through what we are going to do today? Yeah, I will. Thanks, Arne. So we are starting off with uh, scanner systems, um, what produces a point cloud. Um, next, we want to um, talk about the difference between structured and structured point clouds. Um, third point, we will um, work a little bit on a live demo to show you um, what means structured and what means unstructured and, and show some steps there. Um, we have a little quiz for you. Um, so you can engage later on. Um, we have some points about the advantages of the different point cloud formats or the, the structured and unstructured parts on both sides. And at the end, we have a little summary about the different formats, which is structured, which is unstructured. And with that, scanner systems, point one. So here you see different scanner systems. Here we have a static scanner, um, generally terrestrial scanners, handheld ones, some ones on, on vehicles and UAVs um, and, and uh, some other airborne um, scan systems. Um, I think this would be with photogrammetry or with cameras or you can yeah, attach a laser scanner directly there as well. Um, and we will start off, or I will start off with a blunt lie here. And this is the static scanner um, are always producing structured point clouds and everything else is producing unstructured point clouds. Um, you, can, you can take this as a, as a rule of thumb um, here at the beginning, um, but we will look into the matter deeper and then you will understand the the yeah the little differences what structured and unstructured means but as i said a blunt lie static scanners structured everything else unstructured and with that Anna, what's the difference between structured and unstructured point clouds well you already told us about all the different laser scanning systems but what is the difference it's basically just that how the data is saved. And it is, is actually independent of the file format. So it is not uh, always sure if you are unstructured or structured, if you know what file format you are, but we are going to get to that later. Now we, are, uh, we want to tell you what is the, uh, what makes an unstructured point cloud unstructured. As you can see here, uh, we have unstructured scan data. There the 3D data is saved in no order or any particular structure. So no information is available for the neighboring points. To make that, uh, this point clearer, we will provide here a little example. There you can see two points, one with the index of 100. And after a few other points in the table, you see the point with the and with the index of 189. But if you look at the 3D data, you see that they are basically neighbors in the 3D space, but not in the file for in the file that are, that they are saved in. So you can see here that if you have a neighbor in 3D space, it doesn't particularly mean that they are neighbors in your file. That is the essential of having an unstructured point cloud. In the ne uh, next slide, we see uh, a 3D scan that is captured with an unstructured device. Here you can see every 3D point uh, can be captured from a different possession, uh, position. And that, that, me that means that they also can be uh, captured at a different point in time. If like if you start at the bottom of the picture, you uh, see the uh, the cables and the masts, and you go uh, all, to, uh, all to the end of the uh, picture or the field you see there, and then you go back. Then you capture 3D points on the cables or in the masts from two different uh, uh, positions, and you will get a different uh, field of view of them 
but the points you are capture you capture are actually at the same place so they are neighbors in 3d but they aren't neighbors in time or in the file format so now that you know the what the difference is or what uh, the essential is of unstructured points now martin will tell you about structured points right so structured scan data on the other hand um we have here written down some some things which um, needs to be um, valid. So um, it's an injective projection from 3D data into a 2D plane, um, which is available. Um, structured point clouds are 2D indexed in a way that the neighborhood for 3D points and 2D indices are identical, and points are based on the same capture position. Um, this sounds yeah very mathematical, but um, yeah the reality is very simple. So again, a little um, example here. So you have um, your rows and columns, or um, U and V, where you um, have the index. And again, you have the 3D information. And here you see if we go one column, um, if we change one column, then the, the points there in 3D space are also um, neighborhood points. Um, same for if we change the row here between the, the first row and the, the last row in the table, we change one row, but we have the same column. Um, we have again neighbor neighboring points. I mean, the, the X and the, the Y are almost identical um, as well as the Z. Um, or we can show that in a little different way um, everybody is familiar with. Um, think about um, a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet or Google spreadsheet, where you have your different rows and you have your different columns, normally named A, B, C, D, or in our case now one, two, three. And in every Excel cell, you have a one X, one Y, and one Z value. And if we now, for example, take here the first row and the third column, um, the X value 8.6, uh, 1.3, and 3.6 as a set value, um, then the neighboring cells are um, in 3D neighboring points as well um, for this particular um, static scan. Um, normally, if the scanner is standing upright, um, as a rule of thumb, we could say that the set values um, in the highest rows, like in row uh, one, two, and so on, have higher values than the set values at the bottom of the file. So, because you um, capture everything at the at the top of the scanner um, with higher set values, and then you you go down. So, this is representing an image in 3D, you could say. Um, since we have these indices here, we can provide a nice little image of, of um, the points as well. So this is now a colorized image, but behind every pixel information, behind every color pixel, we have this XYZ data. So we have a 3D point behind that as well. And of course, we have the reflectivity um, values as well, since this is a static scanner. Um, as you can see here, we have here 360 degrees in columns and 180 degrees in rows, meaning um, this part here and this part here are connected. You can see it here by, by this um, wooden column that it goes here all the way. So um, it's like a panoramic image. Um, so we have a complete full panorama with a static scan, but of course, and as you know, now this is structured but we are able to have a smaller part of the point cloud as well or um, from the static scanner a normal pan um, a smaller panorama not 360 to 8, uh, 880 degrees but a little bit less for example 180 degrees in columns and only 90 degrees in rows so it's only a part of that we are still using a static scanner but now we have only a small part a small image a smaller image Mm, but what about if we have different scan locations? For example, we are looking yeah, to the door from this position and we are looking to the door from this position. Again, not a full panorama, only smart parts, uh, small parts, which would go to the next point. What if we are doing that not um, like in a normal scanning project with static scans um, 
where we have yeah our 10 20 40 1000 scan locations but um, what if we are producing these scan positions every second or millisecond then we would get a complete trajectory with a mobile mapping scanner or a handheld scanner or a, any other kind of scanner so we have here a small image which is index, indexed and we are able to look up that information from that particular scan position um, and I mean this is exactly what a mobile mapping scanner or yeah, a handheld scanner is doing um, I've um, here a little video where we where we were scanning around and every image change you see here in the video stream is exactly one point cloud which was taken at that time which you could look up in 2D indices so every position and every thing we are looking here is part of a structured scan point cloud um, which brings us back to the first slide where I said I will tell you a blunt lie that a static scanner is producing structured point clouds and mobile mapping scanners are producing unstructured point clouds. It's not entirely true because mobile mapping scanners um, are producing structured scans as well. The difference is how the, they are handled in the files normally. But let's talk about files first. On the left hand side you see a typical unstructured ASCII um, file XYZ which is which is used in our yeah in, in laser scanning on on and on the right hand side you see another typical ASCII file which is structured PTX. Um, we see here all the point information XYZ we have here the reflectivity value and we have here the RGB value for the color um, the same on the right hand side we have here XYZ, reflectivity and RGB as well. The only difference here is that at the beginning you see here some additional information. How many rows and columns do we have? Some um, motion for the pre-registration and some more registration parameters uh, where the um, scan was taken. If, um, yeah, both um, were, by the way, created from the same file. I've used the FARO scan, a terrestrial scanner, and just exported one time an XYZ file and one time a PTX file. So if I export both, um, in theory, I should be able to, um, they should look identical more or less, except that yeah, the PTX is structured and the XYZ is not structured. So let's have a look in Cloud Compare directly, right? So if I turn on here the PTX, the structured scan, you see here yeah, um, the same as before, how it looks, um, the same point cloud we've already used. And um, if I turn on the unstructured one, you see it's yeah, at the same location. Of course, we could now do a, um, a direct, direct um, comparison in cloud compare and compare all points if they are identical. but um, looking just on them should be sufficient in my opinion um, for this explanation. Um, but the question, one of the questions we wanted to talk about in the webinar is, are we able to um, switch between unstructured and structured point clouds without any means necessary? So what we have done here is we have, take, um, we have taken the information from the PTX file and put it into the XYZ file and vice versa. Um, of course, this stuff we didn't copy because um, then the file format wouldn't be um, yeah, correct anymore. So now you see here the 0 0.7 in the XYZ file um, as it was before here in the PTX file and the other way around. And let's load these two, right? Or let's start with a XYZ file, nope. This is a gray value and we apply. So if they were directly interchangeable, the point cloud should again be at the same location. And um, yeah, it should look completely identical. So without doing any calculation, they should be at the same location. But um, as you can see, they are not. 
they are at different locations. If we have a look here onto this point cloud, of course, um, you see that it uh, that it looks um, more or less, or yeah, it looks the same. The only difference here is that it is at a different location. Why is that? The reason behind that is, of course, this motion here, which we didn't apply. So now the coordinates are different. If if we want to indeed change an XYZ in a PTX file uh, interchangeably, we need to um, multiply this matrix here with the coordinates we transferred, and then we would again get the complete identical file. What about the other way around? Are we able to use the PTX as well? So again, um, Cloud Compare, let's use the PTX file and import that. By the way, while this is loading, in June we have another webinar um, where we are talking about development, um, software development in laser scanning itself. And um, the inventor of um, Cloud Compare will be um, one of the one of the um, people on the on the podium. So he will be in the discussion panel with us, which is very great. Uh, so you see here you see an in, an, an error occurred while loading house. Um, yeah, the PTX because it's a malformed file. This means, um, yeah, somehow the file is not correct anymore. Um, but anyway, Cloud Compare is reading it anyway, which is uh, nice. But again, of course, you see that it's uh, at a complete different location. So now we have, uh, yeah, Point Cloud Inception, I guess. But um, this file again looks um, identical. Now I have the gray values. Let me uh, switch that here to RGB as well. So you see it's again, yeah, completely identical to to um, to the other point cloud so far, except that it's at a complete other location and that we get uh, got an, an file uh, error when loading it. Um, why are there the different locations? I already explained that. Um, the structured scan, the static scan, um, is in a local file system, and the local file system is uh, yeah, reading the points. And from there, you need to use this motion here, this information, to transfer it to a global coordinate system. And then um, it's yeah, there available, and the coordinates are identical. What happens with the index or you saw now we, we um, use both in Cloud Compare. Cloud Compare is showing everything unstructured. There is no, no information available there for like panoramas. So we have this panorama here, the, the PTX uh, file where we didn't switch. So um, not this one where we have the minus 14 and stuff in there, but the correct one. And what happens to the panorama if we would include um, or import the wrong panorama? then we'll get a very nice image which lo looks like that um, which nobody can use so this is now the data from the xyz um, file in the ptx file without doing any index shuffling without any applying indices or resorting the stuff this is what it looks like all right so now we saw or we discussed, um, are you able to um, yeah, transfer structured into unstructured data? Yes, you only need to imply a motion if there is one. Yeah, this information which I've shown you. What about the other way around? If I have an unstructured cloud, uh, am I able to calculate it back into a structured one? Um, again, we have here prepared some things. Um, on the left hand side we have the um, unstructured point cloud um, the xyz on the right hand side we have here the structured one the ptx of course you see here now the panorama and we can open the panorama and what i've done here and as you can see here we have the unv so we have the row and columns and what i've done here on the right hand side is i've back projected all points which are there into the position here. I know the position 
from the structured point cloud. So I use the same position here. I use the same um, amount of rows and columns. So I use additional information which I normally wouldn't have. And then um, what you can do here is um, calculate a panorama there as well. And if we open that, it looks like that. Let's change to color. Um, and here you see already differences. Right-hand side, PTX, left-hand side, XYZ. Um, uh, for example, here, you have here everywhere color information. Here it's missing. Why is it missing? Because valid data is not safe normally in unstructured scans. Why should you, why should you save un unvalid data? So this is thrown away. Um, if we change here to the validity map, you will see that at this location, the scanner didn't pick up any points, but the image um, provides you with um, with um, yeah image data anyway. So this is one of the differences there. Anna, do you have uh, something to add here? Why um, these are looking different? Yeah, of course. Um, as you can see, and recalculated image the edges aren't as clear uh, anymore as in the normally uh, uh, in a normal photo from the camera and this is because we apply an algorithm to try to sort all the points uh, back into uh, a 2d plane but since we have no perfect data and also we are working with pcs and uh, we have to discretize uh, all the data. So a point, get, uh, the, the perfect uh, or the, uh, the comma values won't be as precise anymore as before. So we get uh, rounding mistakes and discretization errors. And that is why we have this not nice looking edge anymore. Thanks. So um, another point is we done we have done that for one scan and we adapted and we provided here information which we normally wouldn't have if this is truly unstructured. Um, which means if there are now two scan positions in this point cloud, um, we can't be sure if we um, if we apply the right point to the scan information. If we apply the right scan, um, the right point back to to this image. So if we if we go back to, to the slide where we were here, where Anne explained um, uh -huh, here, uh, where Anne explained that neighboring points don't need to um, match up. This means um, um, that they can be from different scan positions, and then we are not able to determine that anymore in our algorithm. I mean, for example, here in this point cloud, you see here it's outside, here it's inside. They scan through, through the window. And for example, the points taken here, they can be taken from any position here. They can be taken from this position here. And you don't know that anymore. And if you want to back project them into the, the image itself, you need to know which image was it taken from. And you can't say that if you don't have a timestamp or if um, you are able to to get that information directly from the from the scanner vendor himself, so once the point cloud is truly unstructured, you have no um, you are not able to recalculate it into a structured one, except if you have um, if except if you are doing some yeah assumptions about the positions where the point cloud was taken from, or um, yeah. If you if you just apply um, yeah some algorithms and, and see uh, if it fits or not, um, but it's not a safe assumption that you are able to convert an unstructured point cloud into a structured one. So might be possible, but normally it's not. And now it's quiz time. Let's hope you all paid attention and have a. Uh, and you know what uh, different times, uh, types of file formats are what. Uh, earlier I said that uh, sometimes you don't know because it's file independent, but let's try anyways. So is LIS, uh, the file format LIS structured or unstructured? Please answer now. All right, 
then it's around 50-50 we could say the the answers um, but LIS is indeed unstructured so let's go with the next one what about LRZ okay I think we are again now it's 40 to 60 for structured but I you can still see my screen right I need to disappoint um, as I said is unstructured as well you can save timestamp information in there um, but normally um, it's not um, yeah there is no information which uh, for 2d in indices in there um, little excursion here. Uh, what's the difference between LIS and LRZ? Um, LRZ you can you can think of LRZ, um, yeah, speaking like um, a zipped LIS file. Um, this is thanks to Martin Isenburg and um, his his co-workers and and other people working on LRZ. Um, so if we check the file sizes, for example, here yeah, the same point cloud, um, just an example. Um, which is an LIS um, 52 gigabytes big. In LRZ, it is only 5.2 gigabytes, so a lot less data. And this is all thanks to compression. So LRZ in this example is around 10% the size of LIS, or yeah, LIS is 10 times bigger than LRZ. So um, normally a lot of people are um, able to read and write LRZ. So if possible, I would always prefer LRZ over LIS because of the compression. And as always, if you comp uh, compress uh, an image or a text, it depends on the data how the compression rate is. So it's uh, not always the same. So if you if the compression uh, 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 compression is not as good as ninety percent or ten percent of the original size, it's because you have uh, varying data. So it varies. On the other hand, it might be, of course, a lot better than uh, this 10% size, uh, what I have here. But this is, I think, a normal normal scan with inside and outside data. So um, depending, of course, of your data set, the compression. Next one, PTG. Is PTG structured or unstructured? What do you think? By the way, um, as, as a rule of thumb um, for that, um, if you're able to see a panorama in there, um, like a real panorama, not just the point cloud, you can think of it like um, it is structured. And on the other hand, if you only have the point cloud, then normally it's unstructured. So the people here are very sure now. Um, now, 80% voted for structured. And this is completely right. PTG is structured and not unstructured. So in PTG, the panorama information and the indexing is available, and you can look that up, look that look that up and have the panorama there. Structured. Two more to go. We have now E57. Is E57 structured or unstructured? All right. Now we have again, or we have now 90 to 10% to, uh, around um, what the people voted for. Trick question, I'm very mean. It's both. You can save unstructured data as well as structured data. Um, and um, yeah, of course you can always um, read the structured data, data unstructured, but in E57, it's indeed possible to, to save both. Um, so you never know what you got there, if it's structured or unstructured. And one last one is RCP um, or RCS from Autodesk, which we have in the quiz today. Do you think RCP, RCS is structured or unstructured? Uh, by the way, RCP is the, the, um, the project file and the RCS then are the, the point load files itself. So the point information is in the RCS file and the RCP is just the project information, which RCS files are in the project. Um, and here we have, yeah, 83 say structured and 50% say unstructured. Um, and again, it's both. 
So um, there are a lot of people who cho have chosen both, which is completely correct. Um, let me just show you how you can see if RCP or RCS, if it's structured or not. Um, you can see it directly in the file system, which is very great. Oops. Um, I've here exported a structured and unstructured point cloud, um, and you can see it with the RCP. But if you go into the support folder where the RCS files are located, we go here in the structured one and here in the unstructured one, you can see here the RCS file where the point cloud is located but you have additional files here in the structured folder. You have a div file, you have a LLT file, you have a RCC file, and you have a thumbnail. So in recap itself, you then would have a mirror ball and would be able to see the panorama. Perhaps I can, I can show that. Let's open the structured one. Five hours later. Uh, so now here you see the mirror ball. I'm able to go in there. And now it's updating the cache. And now we are here in the image itself. But if I open the um, unstructured one, then we don't have here this mirror ball. It's not there. We only have the point cloud itself. All right, then let's talk a little bit about advantages and disadvantages of uh, structured and unstructured data and what's in there. Let's talk about the file size. If we have structured scan data, we need additional information, these indices, um, and we need to save the non-valid points in any way or another, meaning if I'm scanning outside with a static scanner and there is a lot of sky, the sky needs to be saved as well because we need to have a look up between the index and the, the point itself or the point which was not scanned because it was not able to yeah, have a point a reflectance there. So, um, but we still need to have somehow the index or we need to know that this index is not available um, because there is no point. So this needs to be saved. So we have more information we need to save. And the other thing is, if we have two different scan positions um, and we are scanning the same scene, we have the same field of view or a similar field of view, we have duplicated points. Um, and these are from different scan positions because of few directions. Um, how does it look? Um, let's take here this, uh, um, how, do, how do we call it, button? Light switch. Uh, thanks, <laughs> the light switch. Um, as you can see here, we have different scan positions of the static scanner. Um, we have the same position here, um, and the point is saved twice because it's in different scan positions. Um, in an unstructured point cloud, we would be able to, to elim eliminate this, but uh, Anna, discuss the, the unstructured file size, please. Yes, uh, one of the uh, bigger advantages of unstructured point clouds is, of course, the file size. It's smaller since we can uh, eliminate all duplicate points since everything is in one file, basically. So we don't have to save a duplicate because we can, uh, if you look around with a GeoSlam scanner or another mobile scanner, you, of course, have duplicate points and they only have to be saved once. So no uh, redund redundant data are in the files. Also, we are able to filter the point cloud. Uh, let's say you have you have the whole uh, point cloud in one file. You can use an octree tree or a sparse, uh, or sparse filter to um, discretize all the points that you uh, 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 that you scanned and um, project them into, for example, an octree cube. So multiple points are in one cube depending on the resolution you're giving the filter. So you can even have have even less uh, file size because you uh, 
don't need that accuracy and just use a lower resolution. Recap is, for example, doing that um, always. If you if you import a file, an unstructured point cloud into Recap, for example, an LRS or LRZ file, they will filter the points to be one millimeter apart. If your point, uh, point cloud would be denser, like the point spacing is 0 0.5 millimeters, these points are filtered out. It will only take um, um, points which are one millimeter apart, or depending, of course, on the on the um, spacing you set into into the import options. Of course, you can say I'd like only to have points which are 10 centimeter apart. Um, but this is um, yeah, a possibility to reduce the file size and only use uh, less points. Uh, but let's uh, have an example here for the file size. Um, I have here a, a comparison of one static scan position, PDX versus XYZ, a structured scan, PTX versus unstructured um, XYZ. In this case, the XYZ is bigger. We were asking ourselves, why is that? It was a little bit strange. The question, um, the reason is we took this, this scan here, and as you saw perhaps or remember, it is at a location like 90 meters in set and um, the X and Y are all uh, in, in the 20s as well. So the reason um, why this is bigger is the PTX has more scan lines. There are more lines in the um, ASCII file, but the XYZ file, um, every line is longer because at the beginning of the PTX, we have this motion which we apply, though the values in the PTX and the lines, the point lines, are smaller, therefore it's bigger. Um, I've repeated the same for the complete project here. And as you can see here, um, then the structured PTX is getting a lot bigger than the unstructured data because of all the sky which was removed, all the all the duplicate points, and of course, uh, yeah, the sky. Um, the non-valid points, which are all in the PTX, which is a huge factor if you don't have compression and PTX and XYZ are not compressed at all. Therefore, you get huge file sizes. If you would have compression, these would of course be a lot um, yeah, smaller. I mean, RCP is having, having compression, same scan between uh, PTX um, and RCP, you see it's smaller, but the unstructured point cloud in RCP, the RCS file is even smaller than the 310 megabytes of uh, yeah the the normal static scan the structured one because yeah we can as i said remove a lot of information there and i think uh, recap is, is holding the point cloud twice one time unstructured and one time structured in in this case but i'm not sure how they are doing it on the other hand of course we have um, the advantages and disadvantages of the calculations, algorithms usable, and the processing time. Um, in the structured point cloud, you have additional information. You have the indices. So, for example, if you do normal directions, if you want to calculate the normals, you can use that information, the structured uh, from the structured scan data, the indices, to um, yeah, a um, make the calculation a lot faster and B, make it more robust because you can determine the normal direction um, from the indices itself, um, which is which is a lot easier than in the unstructured one because there you have the issue that you can't say, is it looking um, in the front or in the, in the back because you don't have the position from where it was taken from. And of course, the point lookup speed, if you want to, for example, search for the nearest neighbor, if you have one setup, there are eight point comparisons you need to do. Um, just uh, yeah, take the cell and compare all eight cells around it and see which is the nearest one and then you have the nearest neighbor. Um, of course, if you have multiple setups, um, you can use the motion, the, the pre-definition where the scan was taken and the look direction and um, then you don't need to search the complete list of points for the neighborhood points. Um, but only um, yeah, small parts of every point cloud of the static scans. On the other hand, for the unstructured, Anne, I leave that to you as well. Yeah, thank you, Martin. And here we have one of the downsides of unstructured uh, point clouds. First, if you only have a huge, let's say, mass or a list of uh, 3D points, you might need to uh, 
set them apart by queuing so you don't have to load in the whole point cloud at once then because if you have a, a huge project in an unstructured point cloud your RAM uh, would just be overfilled and it, everything would be slow so you just cube the data from uh, and very rough roughly so you just need to let's say load in a five by five by five cube which is already lots of data and then you apply your algorithm on this and other way is uh, another point why processing speed is not that good for unstructured point clouds is like martin said that the point lookup speed is not easy to do uh, to do fast because if you want the neighbor the 3d neighbor of a point you have to look through all the points or you have to pre-sort them in uh, in any kind so you can make the lookup faster but the sorting algorithm or, uh, also needs time and needs to go to, through all the points that is why the processing time is most of the time slower in unstructured point clouds than in structured point clouds so this means or this brings us to what should you do with the data um, as a rule of thumb if you have structured scan data and you want to apply um, yeah calculations um, it's always better to go structured um, a lot of applications are using the structured data or um, the static scan data um, first of all as structured and then there are in addition um, yeah applications which are using the mobile mapping dat data as structured one and are able to read that through apis from the vendors for example and make that structured um, as well and save them internally structured and use them structured so if possible um, the nearer the file format um, to the vendor you are reading like if you are importing a faro file try to import the FLS file instead of an E57 or even an LIS, LZ file, because then you have the more structured data or the probability that it is structured is a lot higher than if um, yeah if you are just getting yeah um, a processed uh, point cloud later on. On the other hand, of course, if you want to save data um, and don't need to to process it any uh, any more later on it would make more sense to go into the unstructured one um to to yeah keep it there but of course if you need the data perhaps later on to do more calculations on it um, you need to save it structured because yeah new calculations structured might be better to to do that and as a last point uh, we want to talk about the point cloud formats which are giving you what we have already asked LIS, LZ. This is unordered um, or unstructured. XYZ or PTS, ASCII formats um, are unordered as well. We have PTG, PCD, which is ordered. We have PTX, which we saw in our uh, um, examples, which is ordered as well. And we have E57, with, uh, which is both unstructured and structured. And in addition, we have here a list of vendors. Um, so here, Faro, FLS, the project format is LS project. This is of course ordered, structured. We have ZF project format, ZF project. This is, a, this is a static scanner as well, so it's ordered as well. We have a regal scanner, which is RSP, uh, the project format, and they have a point cloud format of RXP or RDBX. So this is structured as well. Um, the Mantis and Dot product are normally um, handhelds, and out of their software, um, you will get the, the data unstructured. I think with the new Mantis SDK, you can get it structured as well, so you get single, single, single shots of the point cloud. Um, what I explained: small parts which are structured, which you can then save as you like to. Um, the Leica format. Um, is as far as I know both, but there is no direct um, yeah, API to read that. We have the Autodesk format RCP or the point cloud format RCS. I've shown, showed you um, yeah, the difference there. That is both as well unordered and ordered. Our own format from PointCap, um, the project format or so the point, point cloud format is LSTX. 
and we save it in our LSD files and we can save both as well. And we have here Trimble uh, and I forget to do the the, uh, <laughs> the access here. As far as I know, these are uh, both as well ordered and unordered and can save use both of them in their TCF file format. I've started a little discussion on the laser scanning forum um, and started to provide here a lot of different, uh, yeah, other formats as well. Um, as you can see here, the vendor, the project format, point cloud format, and if it's structured or unstructured. And I've gotten uh, yeah, great replies here from other people as well, and I've added it here. So I will add um, more information here. So if you want to look up um, anything you know there or um, any format, of course you can yeah go to yeah the laser scanning forum and uh, see if I already added it here. If not, you can just ask um, as a reply. Then you need to register. If you're not registered, you can view the post only. Um, but still, it's a great place to to ask questions in my opinion. So go check that out. Um, I think we will provide the link in the in the in the email later on, which you will get tomorrow in 24 hours. All right, um, this was it from our side. Thanks for listening, and we are going to check the questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to yeah post them here. Um, one thing which I want to, to mention, or as Anna has said, um, yeah, ask them in the chat box, the question box, and then we will discuss them here. Um, one thing I want to add here is um, it might be nice for you to know um, which scanner is producing what, and um, I will try to add that in, in the forum as well. So you can check that there. So we have like, yeah, I have a P40. What am I getting as a as a direct file from the from the P40 directly? And if I import that into Cyclone or Register 360, what I'm getting there? And is there access to it uh, through other manufacturers like um, that that you're able to read the the raw format from the scanner directly through an API or not? And um, then you have a complete list there as well. But I will add that to the forum in a couple of days, I guess. Anna, do you have anything to add? I see no, I see no questions. Mm, no, I, I think you explained everything quite well. <laughs> I hope so. Um, and I hope it was quite all right. Um, perhaps I was um, yeah, spreading rumors and misinformation. If you have any other questions, just contact us, martin.grana at pointcap-software.com or Arne, um, or just write to the info ad, and then they will yeah, direct it to us. Ah, there is a question. I see one. Ah, all right, nice. It was just saying thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. And with that, I think I will finish the webinar here. So, thank you for force, listening. May the force be with you. <laughs> and have a happy Star Wars Day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.